we're gonna make this bare wall look like it has a massive window using basic tools and some cheap TVs. Today's video is brought to us by Squarespace. I am starting off with three Insignia TVs. They are 50 inch and they were $229 a piece. The 43 inch is only $149. So TVs are getting really cheap these days. The game plan. I'm gonna run one piece of plywood that's gonna go all along the back that's going to screw into all the TVs. I want them butted up as close as possible. This is going to be a fairly easy build. First order of business is I wanna cut a piece of plywood that's 10 inches wide and we're gonna cut it too long by 84 inches. I'm not going to use a wall hanger. Three reasons. One, these TVs are gonna be hung vertically and vertical TV wall hangers are ridiculously expensive. Two, that's gonna offset it from the wall more than what I want. And three, I want this whole unit to come off the wall as one piece where I could hang it somewhere else or just get back to the wiring. I've got my TVs all butted together. I'm marking where the screw holes are. And then I'm gonna draw a line down the board. I'm gonna use this existing wall hanger to mark out the four holes here on my board. If you don't have one of these, you can download templates off the internet. You can also take a piece of paper and poke holes where the four screw holes are, and then use that paper to transfer your holes. And in theory, this should drop right on, and we can bolt that down. One of the reasons I chose the Insignia TV is these somewhat thin bezels that it has, and they almost butt up perfectly against each other, except right here, the on-off switch keeps it from butting up perfectly. But this guy pops out. I'll figure out a solution for the power buttons down the road. So that's all connected to each other. So now I'm going to make the frame out of some Baltic birch plywood that this will be connected to inside the frame. Don't worry, we're gonna reinforce everything because it is gonna be, it's gonna be pretty heavy. So we're going to do butt joints and pocket hole screws. This video is inspired by Drew Builds and Potato Jet who have great videos on making TVs look like windows. I'm taking a different approach, but definitely check them out for other options. I'm cutting the four frame pieces to four and a half inches wide, which should accommodate for the depth of the TVs. On the two side pieces, I need to cut a rabbit that's going to hold that center piece that we cut earlier. I was going to use my router, but I don't have a bit big enough. So I'm gonna do something that I've never done before and then use a track saw and just kind of nibble away the rabbit that I need. This is gonna take a while, but I think it's gonna work. The rabbit I'm making is a half inch deep and three quarters of an inch wide. Since my blade is only one eighth of an inch wide, this takes multiple passes. So after each pass, I just nudge the track over a little bit and then make another cut. Of course, this is much easier with a router or a table saw. That took a little bit of work, but we got that rabbit with the track saw. So next we got to drill pocket holes and the two long pieces and start putting the frame together. We got this. I do have some doubts. This thing is freaking heavy. Now we'll just add some glue and some pocket screws. We got that frame surrounding the TVs. That center support board I have lightly bolted into this TV here. So now I can mark and cut this to its perfect length. It's heavy as AF. This might be the wrong move. We'll find out. You'll fit in there. You will fit in there. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! So before we glue and screw this back piece into the frame, I just realized that our bolts, they're going to stick up and they're gonna hit the wall. So I gotta countersink this so it's below the surface. Since it can be a little difficult to drill a bigger hole on top of a smaller hole, I made this little piece here that's going to guide my bits down a little bit and then once I get it started, and then now this will drop below the surface. Now we're going to glue and screw this into place. So we're gonna pre-drill 
and put some screws into here to hold this into place. We're getting close to being able to hang this. The next thing I wanna do is add one more board that's gonna go right along here. And that's going to be a French cleat, and that's how it's going to hang on the wall. So a French cleat is two pieces of wood with a 45 degree cut. And one piece gets screwed right to the wall, and then the piece that you're making falls right in there for a super solid hold. So back to the track saw, we'll cut a 45, we'll do our thing, we'll start hanging some stuff up. Always glue on top of your TVs. So we added that top piece with the mating French piece. This was going to go onto the wall. We added another support down on the bottom, which really stabilizes the whole thing. And just for some added fun, I added these triangles here on the corner. And I think it is sturdy. It is, oh, it's gonna hold just fine. Super heavy. It's gonna take two of us to hang it up on the wall. But the next thing I gotta do is take the TVs back out. I'm gonna flip it upside down and we are going to edge band the front, make it all pretty, get some finish on there. Then we're gonna hang it on the wall. So now we're gonna cover up all the plywood edges with some iron on edge banding. It's pretty simple. You just cut it to length and you iron it on. And then we just trim off the excess with a knife. I've got the frame roughly where I want it to go. I'm trying to figure out where to hang this French cleat. I'm gonna screw it right into the studs. I've got the studs marked out with tape. You can find the studs by using a magnet to see where your drywall screws are. So once we get this French cleat screwed to the wall, we can then mount the TVs back into the frame and then hang it up here. Before I put the TVs back in the frame, I'm just gonna make sure this fits. Whatever happens, Daniel, I don't want you to help me. Well, that you can. Whew, that's gonna work. Okay, let's put the TVs in. We're getting ready to hang this guy on the wall above this cabinet here. This is definitely a two person job, but Daniel's contract states that he does not want to be in any videos whatsoever. No face reveal. He's like that. Who's that? Uh, that streamer dream. He's like that dude. He doesn't want his, he doesn't want his face to be wiped. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but before we hang this up and figure out how to make all three TVs talk to each other, I'm gonna send you over to Pachuto number two, who's got a little message for you. Oh, hey, I'm just over here working on the website, my Squarespace site, which happens to be today's sponsor. The reason we use Squarespace is it's just super easy. Squarespace has this thing called the Fluid Engine. You don't need to know what the Fluid Engine is, except it's the backbone of the website. It allows your website to look good on mobile, tablets, or desktop, and it reforms itself to look good on mobile, tablets, and desktop. If you're watching this video, you probably like making things, and maybe you like making things for other people. With Squarespace, you can set up a store where you can sell yourself or the things that you make. You can sell digital items like plans, which is what I do, and physical items like the things that you make. Squarespace allows you to have a password protected site. And one of the new features that I'm really loving about Squarespace is the asset library. I can hold all of the assets that's important to my business, like logos and headshots and photographs. And, and it's just all right there at the ready for me to use at any moment in time. I'm just using one of the default Squarespace templates and you wouldn't know it because there's so much that you can do to the templates. You can bring in your own color palettes and your own images and photos and you can rearrange things and make it look like how you want. And then if at any moment you want to switch to a different template, all you got to do is click a couple buttons. It's that easy. Visit Squarespace and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, it's time to go hang this TV 
figure out how to make all three TVs work as one and make it look good. Got it hung up, I added some curtains to make it look more like a window. We got the three TVs working together, but that was a little bit more difficult than I anticipated. I wasted a bunch of money on things that didn't work. I'll talk about the solution here in a little bit, but first, we gotta take it back down, take the TVs back out because I forgot to add ventilation holes. I did check, these TVs do have an overheat function and they'll just shut down to protect themselves. So I'm hoping these holes are enough. I did have this run in without the holes and without issue, but this is kind of an expensive build, so we wanna make sure nothing happens. If they do overheat even with the holes, I will then add some of these entertainment system fans on the, on the sides just to get some airflow through there. For the 15th time, we're screwing the TVs back in, and then we can hang this up. I'm pinning the curtain to the outside of the frame so the edge of the curtain lines up perfectly with the bezel. We're just gonna hot glue that right on the face there. If you can find a TV that doesn't have the button protruding out of the bottom, you'll be much better off. Now I need to hide this mess down here so it's not so visible. For the frame, we only use two tools, a track saw and a drill. This box, you're not gonna make this box. So I am gonna use all my fancy tools to make this box as quickly as possible so we can talk about how this is working. box all done, there's plenty of ventilation, there is no back, there's a fan on the side, and the remotes work through this grill here on the front that I added some edge banding and some Velcro, and that just pops right on there. Getting the three vertical TVs to work as one was much more of a struggle than I anticipated. I thought the cheap and expensive solution was this video wall controller for $149 on Amazon. I'm not gonna get into a whole lot of detail because the algorithm doesn't like it when I talk too much, so I'll go into all kinds of crazy detail over on my Patreon. But this video wall controller, even though it shows three TVs in a vertical orientation, does not allow you to turn the video vertically. So this cheap solution was out. The next option for you is this HDMI adapter. This works great on a PC. The drivers allow you to turn the TVs 90 degrees. Does not work on a Mac. So if you want to use this on a Mac, you have to leave your TVs in a horizontal orientation and most likely you would want four TVs. The solution that worked for me and my Apple TV happens to be the most expensive solution and that is this video wall controller here. This, you can turn your TVs 90 degrees, 180 degrees. This has a lot of options and allows you to account for the bezel. I'd read the comments and see if there's other solutions that could work for you. There it is, it's great, it's freaking huge. It's made to look like a window. There's some light coming in. I do have to work with the brightness and the contrast and the saturation to make it look a little bit more real. I'll play with that off camera, but I am super happy with that. This particular TV wall controller has multiple HDMI ins, so you could have two TVs with one source, another TV with another. You can do picture and picture. So if you own a business, this is a great solution. If you're in a den, this is a great solution where you don't have windows and you just want to bring in a little bit more nature. If you're new here, check out this IKEA hack where we take this metal cabinet and turn it into a woodworking drink cart. It's quite the transformation. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.